Cool. So we're going to write a simple tree class together. Um, think of chapter 17 as kind of a combination of like the style of chapter 15 and 16 together in that we're going to be like actually implementing the different tree classes together as we go. Um, and then you'll be adding additional features to them like you did in chapter 16. But we're also going to learn all the tree concepts at the same time, kind of like we did in chapter 15. So it's a lot in chapter 17. Um, the good news is the, the programming lab is rather straightforward compared to like the maze lab. So that's something to, to look forward to. Um, what we're going to focus on is if you look at tree demo, eventually we're going to run this code where we make a new tree and we specify the, the data at the root. Um, so we're going to start with Ann um, and I'll make a tree with Peter. And then you can see how we can have, we're going to have this add subtree method that adds one subtree to another tree. So we're going to add Peter as a subtree to Anne. And all of this corresponds to this um, royal family tree um, from the textbook. So like here is Anne here. And we can see that Peter is a child of Anne. Um, and so that's why we add Peter as a subtree to Anne. And then you'll see we do similar things with Zara and Savannah in our test code. Okay. So that's where we're headed, all right? But first we need to build some, some structure for trees. There's a lot of different ways we can code a tree class. Um, we call this like an arbitrary tree in that like each node can have zero or more children. There's no like specific rules. Um, and so the way we model this is gonna have some similarities to the linked list because you'll see we still have a static class called node. Um, which we're going to implement first. Okay, so we're going to start here with, with the node class. Um, just like a linked list, I'm going to try to make lots of connections um, to what we're doing. Um, so I'm trying to make lots of connections to what we're doing that are familiar from like what we did in chapter 16. So with our node class in chapter 16, we had an instance variable called data of type object. And we're going to do the same thing here. Of course, we would really like our tree to be a generic type and to have one of those like angle bracket T things, but we're going to keep it simple for now and not worry about that. Actually, we're going to keep it simple for the entire chapter and not worry about that. So our data will just be of type object and we'll deal with it. Um, in the case of a linked list, we also had another instance variable called next. And if we were doing a doubly linked list, we also had an instance variable called like previous. Um, hold on a second. But here it's a little bit different. There is no real next or previous. Um, so for a given node, it's gonna have zero or more children. So we need some additional data structure to keep track of the children. And we want a data structure that can hold between like zero and many elements. And so we're gonna use um, a list because a list works great for that. So we're gonna create another instance variable here. That's a list of nodes. And we're gonna call that children. All right, we're gonna come back and add the size method later, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. Um, right now, let's focus on the tree class as a whole. So we've defined what a node looks like. So now we need to focus on the tree, okay? A tree really only needs a single instance variable, um, and that is it needs a reference to the root of the tree, which node is at the root. So we'll create an instance variable of type node called root, And then we can focus on the other methods here um, to initialize and, and build our, our tree. So as we saw in the test code, like tree demo here, when we construct a new tree, we specify the data for the root. So that's the constructor. So let's focus on that first. When we invoke this constructor, it makes a brand new tree. And that new tree has exactly one node and no children. Okay, so that's how this is is constructed. 
Um, so we can go through, okay, well, what do we need to do when we construct a new tree? Well, we have to make a new root node. So we can say this dot root equals new node. And then we have to initialize that root node um, in terms of its instance variables. We have to set data appropriately and we have to set children appropriately. So this dot root dot data equals root data. There, we've initialized the data. Now, our comment here says when we make a new tree, it has one node, which we've made, and it has no children. Okay. So we're going to pause here for like 20 seconds, and you're going to talk with your neighbor and decide, are we done implementing the constructor based on the documentation, or do we have more code to write in the constructor if we want our root to have no children. Okay. So check with your partner and then we'll compare thoughts. Hmm. All right, quick show of hands. Who thinks we are done writing the constructor? All right, who thinks we need to write more stuff in the constructor? We have more people thinking that. What, what more would we write in our constructor? Yeah, we really do need to create the empty list because children is gonna be initialized to null and then we're gonna get all sorts of null pointer exceptions most likely. So a, a node with no children doesn't mean children is null. It just means the list is empty, but we still have to make the list, okay? So let's add one more line of code that does that. This.root.children equals new array list. You'll note that I didn't put node in, inside of the angle brackets because it can be inferred from children. Children is a list of nodes. So therefore, when I say new array list, it can infer that the type of the elements in the array list are nodes as well. So we can leave that out. Cool, now we have an empty list, no children. That meets the requirements of our constructor. Looking back at tree demo, we can see that we invoke this method called add subtree, where we pass the, another tree that we want to like become a child of the tree on which we call it. So let's implement that next. This will allow us to actually build a full tree, right? With like children and all of that. So adds a subtree as the last child of the root, okay? So that means this subtree has to be a child of the root node. Um, and that's pretty easy to do with a array list or a list. We can say this dot root, that gets me a reference to the node. Dot children gives me a reference to the list. Dot add is the method that will add an element to the end of the list. And we can just pass subtree here. So lots of dots here. I feel like I did something wrong. Oh. Ooh, this is so good. I did make a mistake. This doesn't compile. All right, this is another like 20 second discussion with your partner. What is wrong with my code? I think this is a very common way to code this method. And we're gonna run into this a lot throughout this chapter. So two things, what do I need to fix? And what common pitfall did I fall into this morning that caused problems? So 20 seconds, talk it over with your partner. How do we fix it? And what, mis what conceptual mistake did I make? What did I confuse?
All right, suggestions. What do I, let's, let's fix the code first and then tell me my conceptual mistake. How do we fix this code? Um, oh, we don't, I like where you're headed. We don't need to an accessor method because you are absolutely correct that root is private. So because it's private, that means we can only access this, this variable in the context of the tree class. But we're in the tree class. So private doesn't mean only we can only access this object's private instance variables. It means we can access all objects of this class's private instance variables. So we can actually do subtree.root. That's that part's okay. Mar, what were you gonna say? Yeah, it that's definitely so what how can we what do we fix? We already have the node though. You're totally right. Like the types don't match and we need a node for the subtree, but where do we, we don't have to make it because we already have it. Where is it? Say again? Yeah. The subtree is of type tree. And if I do dot root, that's how I get a reference to the root node of the subtree. That's what I want to add to my list of children. Okay. And now this, this compiles correctly. Does someone want to take a stab at generalizing what is the conceptual mistake I made when I try to implement this method? Because this comes up a lot. What did I confuse? Yeah. I think you're on the right track. I definitely confused the node with something, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I confuse the concept of a tree with the concept of a node, right? So I tried to use a reference to a tree when I really needed a reference to the like node in that tree. In this case, the root node in the tree. So we, we kind of ran into this with the linked list class conceptually as well. It was really easy to confuse the linked list object itself with the node inside the linked list, right? Here I did the same thing with the tree and the node inside of the tree. So the node type will never leave our public interface. Um, or ever show up in our public interface. Um, but internally, we really operate with nodes, not with trees. And so that was the, con it's easy to get confused by that like I just did a moment ago. All right, let's look back at tree demo. We've implemented most of this. <clears throat> we do want to implement a size method. And size is one of those vocabulary terms um, at the beginning of this chapter. So the size of a tree is the number of nodes in the tree. Okay, so literally we just want to count all the nodes. So if we're starting here at Ann, the size of the tree starting at Ann would be Ann would be one, Peter is two, Zara is three, Savannah is four. The size of this tree start, rooted at Ann is four. There are four nodes in the tree. I'm going to model how we often code these methods because you're going to be writing several of these um, later this week. Um, so we're going to do one together um, and we're going to see like how we have the public method size um, and then how we use the node class to help us implement that. So here's our public method size. It returns an integer. Right now it's hard coded to zero. We want to change that. Um, the strategy we're going to take, the pattern we're going to employ over and over again here is we're going to defer all these calculations to the node class. Okay, so the tree class here is going to basically say, it's going to like delegate. I'm not going to calculate the size of my tree, myself, I'm the tree. I'm just going to ask my root node 
to figure it out for me. So we're just going to say return this.root.size. We're going to invoke the size method on the root node. And then we'll go back up to the node class and implement the size method there. So let's scroll up and do that. So here's the size method. Again, hard-coded to return zero. Um, but we want to return the size of the subtree whose root is this node. So starting at this node, count the number of nodes in this entire subtree. Um, so if we have a node, we know that the sum of all the, the counts here is one. We at least have this node, right? So we know that the size can start at one. And then again, uh, this is going to be a familiar pattern. This node doesn't want to count all of its children's nodes. That seems like a lot of work. So it's going to delegate to each child and say, hey, child, how many nodes are in your subtree? And then it will ask the next child, hey, how many nodes are in your subtree? And then it'll ask the next child the same question, and then it'll add them all together. So the easiest way to do this is just to write an enhanced for loop to go through every child in our list of children. And then for each child, we'll say sum plus equals child dot size. Hey, child, what's the size of your subtree? Cool. I'll add that to my sum and go through each children. And then we simply can return sum at the end. So at this point, we should be able to run tree demo. So finish typing this, switch over to tree demo, hit run, and go from there. Let's, we'll compare notes, make sure it works. All right, I got the sizes four. That's good, should be four. Because again, we're working on this subtree right here. And Peter, Zara, Savannah, four nodes, size of the tree is four.